And joining us on the Homesteader Store hotline is an old friend of ours. And should I emphasize old? No, I won't do that to him. <laughs> it's Mark Meckler, president of Conventions of St- Convention of States Action, joining us to talk about the Convention of States movement. And these are particularly interesting times, Mark, as we, uh, we talk about that process. Welcome aboard. Merry Christmas to you, sir. Glad to have you. You, you know, the Mariah Carey earlier is making me feel older by the minute. I just have to say. Oh my God! <laughs> it is, and sicker by the minute too, because yeah, there's, a bit of there's really, too, for my money, <laughs> there's there's no song more nauseating. Maybe with the exception of the Wham Last Christmas song uh, that I find in the uh, the the holiday catalog, it's it's something else. Now, wh- before we begin, what is your favorite holiday theme, Christmas theme song of all time? So my favorite is actually White Christmas, and there's a reason. The reason is most mm. people don't know the history of that song, which is it was written yeah. by a bunch of Jewish songwriters who had moved from New York to California, were living in Hollywood, enjoying a sunny, warm, uh, sort of beautiful, classical Southern California Christmas, and they're writing it to mock and harass their friends back in New York City. <laughs> So a little uh, schadenfreude, right? Uh, that's yeah. that's the core of the spirit of Christmas. That's the spirit of the holidays right there. <laughs> I love it how that turned into sort of the classic Christmas song, but it was really like, hey, we're not missing that at all. We're out here on the beach in Southern California, and you fools are back in New York. Oh, that's great. That That's great. I think, um, well, if I were in their position, I'd be doing the same thing, because here we are another enduring another Midwest winter, of course, and it looks like we'll have a white Christmas, but it will also be colder than, well, as my old man would say, a well diggers behind. So uh, <laughs> we these are... These are interesting times, no doubt about it. And what I wanted to talk to you about was the Convention of States movement at a time when, at this moment, we have Democrats and big government Republicans holding hands on the one issue, Mark, that they can actually agree on, the one thing, and that's spending taxpayer money. They're putting together a $1.7 trillion or better omnibus spending package uh, it's insane. In the Convention of States, the movement is all about coming together as Americans and looking at some key amendments to bring accountability back to this federal government. And you know, look at what's happening in D.C. right now. Uh, it's just another urgent call, is it not? Yeah, look, I mean, this proves to us that they're even discussing this proves to us how bad we, bad we need a convention of states. And, and also, and I think this is really important to remember, the convention of states now over 5 million people strong is about more than just calling the convention. Those same people are involved in local elections, school board elections, but mm-hmm. also being elected yeah. to eventually to state-level legislatures. These are the people that are going to have to push back against the overreach of the federal government literally at every level in the United States. And so the movement is training up people to be involved in the process and to restore self-governance in America. Yeah, and let's talk about, uh, you know, what the Convention of States Action has talked about, three amendments. Uh, Sometimes some of these things are forgotten about what actually you're looking at. You're looking at a balanced budget amendment. That speaks directly to what we're talking about with this omnibus bill where we've pumped in how many trillions of dollars into making this government bigger and less accountable to the people over the pandemic years and a $31 trillion debt, you have term limits and you have accountability uh, for the administrative state. Um, When you have these kinds of seminal moments, do you get more interest from grassroots, from the average American out there? Yeah, we do. It lights it up for us because people look at Washington, D.C., and, you know, they're seeing, for example, the House of Representatives, and there's going to be a slim Republican majority. And if they see them not stand against this kind of stuff, then they say, well, what else is there? What else are we going to do? And when you look around, you look all the way to the horizon in every direction. The only thing that you can see is going to allow us to stop this kind of thing is Convention of States. If the election doesn't do it, there has to be another way, and the Constitution gives us another way. We can directly stop them from spending the money. We can directly strip their authority to run these administrative agencies. We can get rid of a bunch of them, like the Department of Education or Energy or the EPA. These are things that are not authorized 
by the Constitution. They, their authorization has been invented, and so we can strip that stuff back by calling a convention and proposing appropriate amendments. Mark Meckler, president of Convention of States Action. This has been a very good year for Convention of States, for the, the movement and the momentum on that front. How many states now? And uh, I know Wisconsin joined the ranks in the last year. And then what do you see going on in 2023? Yeah, so Wisconsin, Nebraska, West Virginia, and South Carolina passed this year. I'm expecting a minimum of another four next year on my list are roughly 10 that I think are viable options. I'm shooting for six or seven of those. So that would take us from 19 where we're at. Let's say we got seven more. We'd be at 26. Since it takes a total of 34, we would be within single digits of calling the first ever convention of state. So I think we're going to have a huge year next year. We usually do better in years that are not election years anyway. Uh, you know, whether people are not preoccupied with elections. So, I think 2023 is going to be a banner year for Convention of States. Yeah, I was going to ask you that because everything, all of the attention for months was on the midterms. And now that that's settled, um, do, do you think people will once again refocus? Where are the states where you see the most opportunity on this front? I mean, I think the first state that I'm looking at with the most, very most opp- opportunity is North Carolina. And I say that because we passed in the House of Representatives. We got to the Senate. We just got tied up in committee in the Senate. I think we have the votes there. Uh, our grassroots activists work really hard in the elections in North Carolina, helped the North Carolina Senate obtain a supermajority to override governor's vetoes there. They have a Democrat governor. So I think the Senate is very happy with Convention of States activists. So I think we get that done, and I'm hoping we get it done early in the session. I think Pennsylvania is viable relatively early in the session. Ohio is viable early in the session. We've been moving in Ohio. Uh, and moving towards the end of the year here, we've got great support in both houses there. There's just a lot on the map for us this year. What it means is I'm going to be putting a lot of miles on my butt in the airplane. <laughs> I expect to be a lot yeah. of airplanes. <laughs> well, you get those frequent flyer miles, and uh, maybe you can bump up to a decent meal, but I know that takes many, many miles on an airplane, of yeah, course, we earn uh, these the, days. Yeah, we earn them the hard way for sure. And, it's you know, yeah. I, the good news is I've got help in the coming year. Rick Santorum works for us. A lot of folks know and admire Rick as a presidential candidate and a senator, a fighter for life. Yep. So he travels with me. Mike Ferris, who was my co-founder of the organization, founder of Homeschool Legal Defense Association. He's been the CEO of Alliance Defending Freedom for the last five years. He's retiring, and he's going to come back to work for us part-time. So we've got a lot oh, of help okay. out there this year. It's going to be a banner year for sure. Oh, very interesting. Some good people in the lineup for sure. You know, maybe uh, U.S. Senator Ron Rand Paul said it best last week when he said, uh, you know, basically what we have here is a Congress rushing together. Uh, it, it Once again, leadership engaged in extortion to pass a massive omnibus bill um, where everybody gets something in it, but the the one person that gets screwed time and time again is the American taxpayer. How long can we go on with this kind of uh, massive emergency spending, so to speak? Yeah, you know, and I think what's interesting, and he's absolutely correct, and his dad was saying it before him, the problem is we don't know when the bell tolls, right? We don't know when this thing is over. It's like you're playing musical chairs. At some point, we're going to be out of the chairs, and you never know when that's going to be, but it is coming. Because that which can't continue forever won't continue forever. You can't continue borrowing forever. A lot of people don't realize when we print money, when we borrow money, that's actually just a tax to the taxpayer, even though they don't account for it as a tax. You're going to pay for that. Inflation means your dollars are worth, worth less. That's what you get when they print money. So they are imposing all these hidden taxes on us. Most people don't realize. And if they did, they'd be very angry. So eventually all of that is going to come home to roost. Well, something tells me that you're not going to have a Bing Crosby white Christmas, and something also <laughs> tells me you're okay with that. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm okay with that. I live in Texas. It's unlikely. We had a rough uh-huh. year last year with winter, so we're hoping we don't get that yeah. this year. Let's put it that way. 
Yeah, God bless you all. Hope you don't have to go through that again. But, you know, with Biden administration policies on energy, one can never truly know or be guaranteed. Thanks so much, Mark. Appreciate it. Great being with you, Matt. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. There he is, Mark Meckler, president of Convention of States Action. Is it time? Is it time to call that convention and put some checks on the federal government? How can this not be number one on any list? I just don't understand that. 